Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Do you have deer destroying your yardscape and your garden? Well, we reviewed this little product, the original Night Guard Solar, and we've got some tips and techniques that are gonna greatly help you diminish that deer problem. Hey, stick around. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Urban deer, as well as other nighttime animals can cause all sorts of damage either to livestock or to your prize plantings. And recently, we conducted a field test with our good friends Dennis and Rosemary, who took the time out to test these units in a, an intense, beautiful urban setting where they get as many as 15 deer at a time in their yardscape harvesting everything. They use a combination of different measures, including some of the things we'll talk about, flash tape, water scarecrows, and they added this night guard solar unit, and we put about six of them, and we'll show you how they were placed uh, around their yardscape. They are glad to report that they have diminished damage greatly. It hasn't eliminated all the damage, but it certainly slowed it down and all the droppings they usually find around their yardscape, they said, have greatly diminished. So they have least made a dent in the problem. Now, we found during this time there are some things you need to do to really get effectiveness uh, with these. We've talked to some different people that have used these kind of units. They said, ah, they didn't do a thing. But we found out there's some things you got to know to make these work in your uh, in your arsenal of deer protectant. The main thing is the units which flash in low light or no light conditions. So that means as soon as it turns dusky, when it goes to total dark, the sun goes down, and in the pre or dawn hours before the sun comes up, these units sit there and pulse a light that the animals see and it creates into them a flight or fight response. So you need to know that's when they work and know they're not motion detected. They sit and flash ongoing anytime they're in low light conditions. The big thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to place this unit at the eye level of the animal that you're working to control. So let's suppose that I'm walking into your property and you want me to encounter this light. If you put it up here and it's flashing, I'm going to see it. And they've done tests on this up to a quarter of a mile away. So it doesn't motion detect, it's just sitting there flashing. The animal or the being sees it that far out. But if my light level's up here and the light's placed down here, I ain't going to see it. Right, so it's not gonna do much good. So lesson number one and the most important thing you can keep in mind in using these units is it needs to be at the eye level of the animal that you're working to control. Now these work with a wide amount of animals. You should know that urban deer are perhaps some of the most difficult to control. If you're trying to control raptors or predator birds at night, like hawks or owls, then you would need to face this outward, perhaps away from a central point, way up on a pole, um, 10 foot or more up in the air so that they encounter them as they're coming in. If you're working to control coyotes, you're probably gonna put these right at 24 inches. Deer, four foot. And if you're working to do skunks, raccoons, mink, all these type of things, that's gonna be about 12 inches above the ground. Now, something to keep in mind with that placement, it's not a static placement. Number one, you're gonna move it around from time to time, and we'll show you a simple system how to do that in just a moment. But the other thing is to remember, what is the grade of the approach? So let's suppose that your house is on an incline and the area you wanna protect is up here, the animals are approaching coming this way, you wouldn't put this high up on a post because they're not gonna see it. You're gonna lower it in that case so that as the animal approaches the area of protection, it encounters that flashing light. Conversely, if you're at the bottom side of a hill, you don't just put it at four foot, you would put it higher so that as the animal comes down the hillside and looks across, it sees it way before it comes into the protected area and it really causes questions 
in the animal's mind if it's safe to approach the area. They see it, perhaps, it's believed, as another predator, the glint of an eye, or just something that's unsettling that just makes it easier to go elsewhere. Now let's show you just a simple mounting um, method for this. What I use is a piece of UV protected. This is the gray uh, PVC uh, conduit and it'll last longer in the sun because of the protectant that's in it. In this case, we're gonna do a mounting of four foot above ground. This is gonna be the bottom. We're gonna put the stake, if this was the ground, we would simply drive one of these form stakes so you had about that much of the stake left out and then you place this here. The other lesson that I'll mention on the fly right now is you need to move the position approximately every week because if it sits in the same position, the animal will become acclimated to it and begin to ignore it. But we're gonna put this, let's suppose this is your turf, it's in the middle of your yard and you wanna protect a four-way approach. So we're gonna mount four of these units at the four-foot uh, level. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using a self-drilling screw here. I'm simply gonna drill in a hole, or you could pre-drill using your own uh, just drill sets. Now, to ready these units to mount, when they come out of the plastic wrapper, they're going to have a protective tape across the top and a label that says, please remove this black tape. And when you do, there is the solar collector and charger to the unit. So that has to be exposed. And now you're gonna go ahead and just mount this onto your pipe through the hole, the tab that is provided. Okay, and there you have a one way. So if you had a close like the side of a house or an area that was between two rock walls that you had animals coming this way, you could certainly just plant that facing that way. And when it goes dusky, dark, or in dawn, that'll all be flashing to protect the area. But in this case here, we're actually gonna put another one on the backside because we're doing a four-way cluster to put it in an open area. So let's go ahead and mount our second one. And now you have this four-way array that placed in a center area no matter how the animal approaches. So when the animal sees this up to a quarter mile away, it's also covering about 200 foot of radius this way. So there's some overlap that occurs. So no matter which way the animal comes in, you can also change this up by changing it in angles, changing positions ongoing. Once these units are uncovered and they start charging, they run for three to five years, uh, 365 days, and they just do it year round. And they'll just run for that long and turn on every night, even in very cold weather. So these are a great unit. That'll help you a great deal. Now, as I said, these units will not solve all the problems. We're talking about control, they don't hurt the deer, you're diminishing and trying to uh, deter them from coming in the area. And these do nothing for daytime control. They shut off during the day. So at that point, you've got to use other measures. And what we would suggest you use are water scarecrows. These are motion activated pressurized sprinklers that you put on the end of garden hoses. I'll find a couple online and put links in the description below just for your convenience. Uh, and those then, if a deer walks by it or an animal sets it off, the sprinkler squirts for several uh, moments and frightens the animal away and just makes it where they're unsettled and it makes it where they just don't want to be in the area. The other item to use, and our friends there at Night Guard uh, sell this product. This is flash tape. This is what's called a holographic flash tape. And this roll is 100 foot long. As you can see, this Mylar tape, um, when light hits it, and let's put it down in here with a light, you can see all those flashes that occur. And so when this is hung in trees, you can hear that it also makes some noise and that light, and many times that'll help deter them. 
However, these need to be moved around as well as the deer can get really acclimated them quickly. And in all fairness, in our field test at Dennis and Rosemary's, they actually have a couple picture of a couple deer that just are grazing under the tape after they got used to it or they just weren't paying attention to it or there wasn't enough light flashes happening. So it's a combination of things. You gotta just try and see what your deer are doing and help you greatly diminish the damage that occurs in your yardscape. I'd like to encourage you to buy the genuine night guard it's an American business that was started and built right here in this area. And if you live in the United States, support an industry and a business that's right here. And if you live elsewhere, support ones that are there. You'll also find that these are much better units than the knockoffs that you'll find out there. And when you're talking about good deer control and something that's lasting for a long time, why not use the real thing? Another creature that may be causing a lot of damage to your yardscape are gophers, pocket gophers, moles, and voles. Check out this video where we show how to use cartridges and other means to control these very destructive creatures. And then also check out this video that we created for you and YouTube is chosen based on your preferences. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from dirtfarmerjay.com.